I now call this regular meeting of the Davenport Community School District Board of Directors to order. Would everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Director Klein, Jerome, would you please read the mission and vision statements? Mission statement. The Davenport Community School District is dedicated to growing excellence in academics, the arts, and athletics for every child by ensuring the highest quality education in an environment shaped by our diverse community, preparing our students to be lifelong learners and productive citizens. Vision statement. Education that challenges conventional thinking, prepares all students to compete in a global society, and inspires our students, parents, staff, and community to answer the question, what if? Thank you, Director Klein. Jerome, Director Potts, would you please read the guiding principles? Guiding principles. Opportunity. We provide abundant opportunities to empower students to reach their full potential academically, creatively, and socially. Collaboration. We foster an environment that allows students, families, and community stakeholders to come together for the betterment of our students' education and future. Transparency. We share relevant and important information with our students, families, and the community to maintain open and productive communication. Thank you, Director Potts. Superintendent Schneckloff, would you please go over the goals? Goal number one, enhance student learning, and goal number four, foster the innovative use of finances, facilities, and staff. Thank you. Uh, we will move on to recognitions. Uh, we have a recognition from uh, Project Lead the Way. I will turn it over to the superintendent. Allie Vandermeide and Melissa Trimble are going to share with us this beautiful display of the posters that are along the wall and give us a deeper understanding. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Schneckloff. Uh, my name is Melissa Trimble, and I am one of the curriculum specialists here for the schools. My, one of the areas of oversight that I have is science. So I am pleased to first kind of explain what it means to be a project lead the way distinguished launch building. In order to be in that designation, a school must offer and teach at least one project lead the way module in each grade level. So in kindergarten, just to give you some numbers, we have four modules that we use. First grade also has four modules. Second and third grade have five modules each. Fourth grade has four for this year, but we're going to grow that back up to five in the coming years. And our grade five has eight modules that they do within the Project Lead the Way work. Project Lead the Way launches our guaranteed and viable curriculum for science and computer science. So 100% of our students participate within Project Lead the Way. In order to teach Project Lead the Way modules, each teacher must be trained. So I conduct these trainings in the summer, each summer, and also throughout the beginning of quarter one as needed for some of our new hires. To date, I have trained over 400 of our teachers. All of our elementary buildings have received this Project Lead the Way Distinguished Launch School Award for the 22-23 school year. And our Project Lead the Way Science and Computer Science curriculum would never have been possible without the initial and ongoing support from Project Lead the Way grants, which are then fulfilled from both our Conic and John Deere. We also received, um, they're not up on the wall, but we also received um, Project Lead the Way Distinguished Gateway Schools in four of our intermediates. Um, Project Lead the Way Gateway is mapped to all of our CTE pathways at the high school, and they include courses such as app creators, green architecture, medical detectives, um, and other things very similar to that. Um, in order to be a Project Lead the Way Distinguished Gateway program, you must offer and teach at least one of those PLTW Gateway courses, and a quarter of your students have to come back for a second one. Um, so our Four schools uh, were Sudlow, um, led by Melanie Adams, Walcott Intermediate, led by Stacy Alexander, Williams, led by Dawn Kuhn, and Wood, led by Ariana Snook. Our high schools, we had one high school receive Project Lead the Way Distinguished School Distinction, that would be West, Davenport West. You must offer and teach three Project Lead the Way courses, and a third of your students have to come back for a second class. 
Um, we have three, we are lucky to have three master teachers at West, Davenport West High School. Our biomedical science master teacher is Brandon Yoder. Our computer science master teacher is Doyle Massey. And our engineering master teacher is Greg Smith. Um, we are looking forward to continuing to grow these highly engaging and relevant pathways to build our students' competitive advantage with Project Lead the Way. They're running for the door. Did anybody have any questions before they get out of here? <laughs> Director Beck. I was just going to ask about the banners. Are those going into each of our schools? Sorry, I didn't mean to ask a hard question. So the four intermediates that I listed off and the high school already have their banners up in their school. These will go back out to the elementaries. They actually landed there and we recalled them all so that we could hang them up and do this and now we will put them all back. Yes. Yep. I'll stay for more questions. Director Poshton. Uh, would you uh, list the three teachers from West again? Yeah, Doyle Massey, Brandon Yoder, and Greg Smith. Well, thank you very much for that presentation. You can hurry up and make it home before. You got plenty of time for kickoff, so you'll be good. Thank you. Um, I should have noted that this at the beginning of the meeting, and I forgot. Uh, we do have an item listed for presentations tonight that will be getting moved to, what date did we come up with? A future date. Um, so there are no presentations tonight. Uh, student board reports, we'll start with Ruben. Uh, well, hi, uh, my name is Ruben Leverage. I'm a senior at Central High School. Uh, in upcoming events, our school uh, has sent a lot of students to both the Opus Honor Choir and the Allstate Music Festival, which will be happening this weekend from Thursday to Saturday. It is in Ames, Iowa, so it's a bit of a drive, but uh, having witnessed uh, these people prepare and seen some previous concerts, uh, it's definitely worth the trip to see some of our excellent musicians uh, that we have at Central. As well as this Saturday, uh, we will be, the Marching Blue Devils will be marching in the Festival of Trees Parade down in downtown Davenport. In terms of athletics, um, Winter athletics have just begun. Practice started last week and this week. We don't have any competitions coming up quite yet. But for our fall sports, both our boys and girls cross-country team had runners make it to state qualifiers. And our boys cross-country coach, Mr. Uh, Pearson, was named uh, Mississippi Athletic Conference Coach of the Year. So we'd like to extend our congratulations onto him. As well as our girls swimming team placed third in the state at last weekend's uh, state swimming meet. Highest, it was the highest finish ever for a Blue Devil girls swim team. And our girls swim coach, Brian Heller, was recognized as the regional coach of the year, as well as the state coach of the year. Our speech and debate team uh, recently went to our first competition uh, in Bettendorf. Our, both of our public forum teams walked away with winning three and two records, and we had three people give speeches in extemporaneous speaking and in original oratory, and our team walked away with first place in the original oratory, and we believe this only highlights the, uh, the need and the merit to having uh, speech as a required class in the district. As well as all this, uh, as a senior, I can promise you that our counselors are inundating us with many uh, scholarship opportunities and keeping us up to date uh, as we graduate and go further uh, into our educational journeys, as well as keeping uh, new new freshmen um, as we move into the second term, making sure freshmen are able to complete their credits from anything they might have missed in uh, their first term. Thank you. Hello, I'm uh, Ethan Cepeda from uh, North High School, and I will be giving a student board report for North. Um, so last week at North, we had our annual National Honor Society induction. Um, in which 34 of our students were inducted into the North's uh, charter for that. 
So I'd like to congratulate those people. We also concluded the student hunger drive last week in which our final results um, own 10,000 pounds of food, which we'll be able to provide, provide an astounding 19,920 meals to kids and families in our community. Um, as for this upcoming week, um, on November 13th, we will, or today, I should say, sorry. Um, today, we will be having our uh, eighth grade showcase and um, activity showcase, in that matter, uh, at North. And uh, it will start, it is start, did start at 5.30. And it's a great opportunity for uh, incoming freshmen to, you know, sort of take tours around the school and get to know some of the staff. And yeah, just a really exciting time for these incoming freshmen. And um, today we also are starting our after prom fundraiser in collaboration with uh, Central High School. Um, we are currently uh, going to hold a fundraiser today at both locations of Bad Boys Pizza from uh, their opening hours to the closing hours for the after prom, in which 20% of all sales and gift card purchases from either um, Davenport or Moline locations goes towards the conjoined after prom of North and Central. Davenport, and then um, another thing for after prom is that we are selling uh, driveway stencils uh, to help contribute to the fundraiser. Um, the prices for these um, is a blue and gold Davenport North logo for $20, a blue and gold paw print with the NHS letters for tw also $20, and then the, both the logo and paw print for $35. Um, this Thursday through like, this Thursday through the weekend um, will also be the Iowa All-State Orchestra and uh, Iowa High School Music Association's Festival in Ames, Iowa, in which the students that we referenced last time will be going. So I'm, I wish those students luck. Also, on November 18th, we will be having a dance comp competition at North Norwalk High School. Then, as for next week, on November 21st, we will be performing, we, our choir uh, chambers will be performing at the Festival of Trees in the River Center, and that will be at 10, 10 a.m. And on December 1st at 6.30 p.m., we will, uh, North will be hosting a family bingo night for the instrumental and vocal boosters. Uh, the cost is $10 per person for 10 games, and a four-person table is $50 with unlimited popcorn, four candy bars, highlighters, and bingo cards for each player. Um, and then looking at Wood Intermediate, which is our primary intermediate um, feeder school, uh, last week um, last week was the first ever edition of their student, new student-led newspaper, which is called the Viking Newspaper. And this is going to be a cool opportunity for students to really embrace their creative side as they're allowed to um, submit um, writings, whether it be a short story or a poem or even a joke. And yeah, see if they can uh, get into the newspaper. So great opportunity for... Um, the creative endeavors of school of the students from that school, and then this upcoming week, they'll, they, uh, the Wood Student Council will be uh, having hosting a fundraiser at Nothing Bunt Cakes, which ends on December sixth, in which uh, people can purchase six dollar mini cakes in order to support the cause. Then, looking at Harrison Elementary School, which is our primary feeder uh, elementary feeder school. Um, this upcoming week, they'll be hosting an event at the Eldridge Skate Park from 5.30 to 7.30, just like a fun meet and greet, you know, skating around. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's pretty much all the information that I have from North in our feeder schools, and thus concludes my student report. Hi, I'm from, I am McKenna Burt, and I am from Davenport West. We'd like to congratulate our competition cheer team who just got second place at their state competition in the co-ed cheer division. Our, we would also like to congratulate some West football players that got awards. We have Jordan Tate got co-offensive player of the year. Zane Fellman got co-defensive player of the year. And we also had three players make first team, one make second team, and three honorable mentions. So we'd like to congratulate all of them. Wes also just finished up with their hunger drive, and we raised almost 28,000 pounds of food donations for the food hunger drive. 
and was the highest school uh, in the district, as well as most improved from last school or from last school year. Hello, my name is V. and I am also from West. Our theater program participated in the Iowa Thespian Festival this weekend and learned a lot for their upcoming fall play, James and the Giant Peach. Our Falcons are excited to perform for families and friends and would love to see many more faces perform in, the, in our auditorium on December 1st through 3rd. Furthermore, our West Music programs continue to prepare for our Davenport Community Schools annual Messiah concert at the Adler Theater on November 21st, along with a select few singing at the All State Music Festival. Oh my gosh, sorry, All State Music Festival and our band marching in the fest Festival of Trees. Thank you, student board members. We always appreciate your detailed reports. Thank you very much for that. Uh, we will move on to board reports. Are there any board reports? Director Klein, Jerome. Um, first of all, I would like to uh, offer my condolences to the family of Carolyn Mayhew. Uh, she taught in the district for many, many years um, and just recently passed away. Um, I attended the Veterans Day Parade and it was nice to see all three Davenport High School marching band participating in the parade. Um, I also went to the Veterans Memorial Park um, dedication and, again, the representation of students, the welding students, our teachers that were involved. Um, it, it was, an, if you haven't been down there, you should go down and check it out. It's very cool. Um, and I also attended the North High Play, um, Almost Maine, <laughs> which they did a very nice job. Um, I did also attend Almost Maine. I went twice, but when your kid's in it, you're kind of expected that. Um, and then I also attended the Veterans Memorial Park dedication. We have some phenomenal students. It was nice to see the progression over two classes to get this thing done and to hear how the Veterans Committee talked about our students and their dedication to as well as Mr. Zinn and the awesome artwork and things like that. It was a, it was a phenomenal event. Um, and then the other thing uh, I wanted to talk about, uh, the board uh, will be hosting a poverty simulation on Tuesday, December 12th. And we have invited all the local elected officials and staff from the cities of Bluegrass, Buffalo, Davenport, and Walcott as well as the Scott County Board of Supervisors, our local legislators, and some DCSD staff to participate. A group of approximately 20 volunteers have been secured to help assist. Uh, board members who are able to attend will either take part in the simulation or serve as the volunteers. Uh, one of the big things why we wanted to do this myself, uh, Director Klein, Jerome, and Director Posh, and we went up to uh, I think it was in Ankeny. Uh, the Iowa Association of School Boards put this thing on and it was very impactful and all the things that families go through every day to make sure that their kids get to school. So we wanted to bring that awareness to our local elected so maybe we can get some partnerships and find some pathways to help some of these folks out with some of these things and just to uh, bring awareness with this stuff. Because I mean, tardiness is a big thing but sometimes people don't understand what families go through to make sure their kids can make it to schools and what decisions they have to uh, choose to be able to do that. So it was very impactful for us and we wanted to bring that back here. So um, very grateful uh, for Shaney Ford and who else went and got trained to be able to facilitate this? Jen Van Fleet. So thank you to them very much for doing this and uh, making this come to fruition for me. If there are no other board reports, we'll move on to communications. All right. Get a drink for this long-winded speech. Open forum is a time for members of the community to give input at a board meeting regarding school district issues or concerns. Individuals who want to speak, please fill out an open forum request and give it to the board secretary prior to open forum. The form is available in hard copy for in-person attendees or on the school board page of the district's website for those who want to participate virtually. 
Virtual participants must email their request to Brenda T at tbren at davenportschools.org by 3 p.m. on the day of the board meeting. The board will not act on any issue presented during open forum if it was not published as an agenda item. Iowa Open Meetings Law prohibits action on any issue that is not on the agenda. The president may set the amount of time allowed for individuals to speak, which we usually keep to two minutes. The board asks that no charges or complaints be made against individuals, ind individual employees of the district or community. Remarks that reflect negatively on the character or motives of any person will be called out of order. You will be asked to state your name and home address prior to making remarks. To participate virtually, call 1-312-626-6799 and enter meeting ID. Did I hit my two-minute mark already? <laughs> meeting ID 934-5726-0266. Six three and passcode one one six zero five seven. Brenda, did we have any virtual open forum requests? All right, thank you. Uh, we have two open forum requests. Uh, first, we have Doug Darland, and then we have Amanda Rise Vanderlist. Least Vanderlist. Mr. Darland, if you step up, to, make sure when you push the button, the light turns green. Uh, my name is Amanda Rise Vanderlees. Um, my daughter is on the DC varsity volleyball team. I'm here to voice concern over the head coaching staff of the team. Um, in the volleyball handbook, their goal was to teach important life skills these young ladies will use beyond volleyball, including work ethic, unconditional commitment, how to compete with respect, integrity, and confidence. Yet these girls weren't treated with respect or any of the above. No positive learning environment when they had questions on skills, positioning, teammates, or concerns of their coaches. These women would negatively talk back to the players when concerns were brought up. They spoke negatively about players in front of their teammates. They belittled and intimidated the girls when they were verifying information. A teammate's hair was pulled during a match by the head coach, and it was laughed off. Coaches told, told, coaches told them that they had been overcoached, and the athletes needed to figure out on their own um, why they weren't performing well. The varsity team was in fact not overcoached. They were not coached to improve their skills as a team or individuals, constantly told what they were doing wrong. Several athletes approached them, never any resolve, just repercussions. The team suffered an entire season of being bullied by their coaches. It is the policy of the district to maintain an educational environment free from discrimination, bullying, and harassment. The district is committed to providing it's students with a safe and civil school environment in which all members of the school community are treated with dignity and respect. On the National School Boards Association website, definitions of adult bullying vary, but our summary can describe it as repeated and persistent non-physical mistreatment of a person. The mistreatment includes verbal abuse, threatening conduct, intimidation, attempts to frustrate or wear down, humiliate, pressure, and provoke that uh, that threatens the psychological integrity, career, safety, and health of the target of bullying. Every situation reported by the athletes and parents falls under this definition. At what point will be there, there be accountability? Uh, Ms. Vanderlees, can you state your name and address for the record, please? Yeah. Um, it's Amanda Rise Vanderlees. The address is 2831 Forest Road, Davenport, Iowa, 52803. Hi, my name is Doug Darland. Um, I live at 2110 West 38th Place in Davenport, Iowa, 52806. Um, I'm in a kind of unique position as both the parent of a senior on the volleyball team and a coach on the volleyball coaching staff for the last six seasons. Uh, I have resigned my coaching position at this time because I've decided that I cannot work with a head coach that treats the players uh, the way that the head coach does. Uh, my daughter is a senior and is now done with this coach, but I do not want to take the attitude of it's not my problem anymore because her continued status as the head coach is going to continue to have negative effects on future student athletes. The higher the expectations are for a player, the harsher the treatment is of them. Uh, there are a few girls from the team that were not mistreated much because the expectations for those players were lower. 
My daughter being a senior and the team's setter was held to very high expectations. She was constantly being told in one way or another that she was not good enough, which turned into being accused of intentionally being disrespectful and ignoring the instructions of the coaches. Then she was referred to multiple times by one of the coaches as a team cancer in front of the rest of the team. Uh, taking this directly off the district's website, harassment and bullying mean any electronic, such as emails or text messages, written or verbal communication or physical act or conduct toward a student that is based on an actual or perceived trait or characteristic noted above. One of those noted above being uh, physical ability. Uh, that creates an objectively hostile school environment. An objectively hostile school environment may be created if the communication, act, or conduct, and one of the bullet points uh, following that says, has a substantially detrimental effect on the student's physical or mental health. The written and verbal communication these players received from the coach on a regular basis created an objectively hostile environment, I call it toxic, in the opinions of many. The players couldn't perform to the level of the coach's expectations, so they were mentally bullied as a result. Seven girls left the volleyball program during and after last season, and another six to eight players and a coach are walking away this season. How many people need to leave the program, and how many people does this group of parents and players need to complain to before someone takes it seriously? Thank you both for participating in an open forum. The board always appreciates the input from the community. Uh, we will move on to consent agenda. May I have a motion on the consent agenda? Mr. President. Director Hayes. I move the board accept the consent agenda as written. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. The motion's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Ayes have it, motion carries. Uh, superintendent report. So over the last couple of weeks, I've been visiting some classrooms and wanted, wanted to share some examples of excellence that I saw. In the upper left-hand corner, this was Mrs. Dugan's classroom. Um, walked in, and I want you to picture Mrs. Miss Dugan at Madison, I think fifth grade. I want you to picture the end of a lesson. Um, students are getting ready to start their independent work, and uh, the picture on here is a little blurry, so I'll read to you what it says. This is a champ. This is champs, and this is the acronym um, that this teacher utilized for this time of the day. So the the C in champ is conversation. What kind of conversation are we supposed to have in this? And it says zero. You're supposed to be silent. Help. H stands for help. And so in this, in this time of activity, the, the expectations were to raise your hand um, and keep working while your hand is raised. Um, the activities, the part of the assignment, this was a math portion, the part of the assignment, they're supposed to do the check your understanding, uh, complete your fact, fraction strips, and then move to waggle when you're done. Uh, the M is for movement. Can I move during this time period? And it's restroom and sharpen pencils, both of those when you ask for permission. The P is participation. And in, these time, uh, in this time, participation is be on task on the items that are listed above. And how will I know I'm successful? You'll have completed these assignments. And that's what the champ stood for. And, the, and it was wonderful because we, I was standing there talking to Ms. Dugan. A kid walks up, immediately walks right up to her and says, what am I supposed to be working on? And she pointed right to the board, and the kid goes, oh, yeah, that's right, and, and immediately went back to work. And there was zero conversation and allowed for an excellent transition. In the upper right-hand corner, we have uh, uh, Mr. Varner and Mr. Evans. I will tell you three days later there were no trusses on, on the entire house. They, the, a crane showed up, and they set the trusses with our students, and I believe right now they're actively sheeting the roof. They are moving really quickly. This is our student built home. It's um, roughly located in between the Walmart and uh, the Gardens restaurant uh, over there uh, by uh, uh, south of Kimberly. Um, the kids are engaged. Every I go out once a week. The students are incredibly engaged. They're, 
they're um, working right alongside with the instructors. There's very little downtime. They're doing a wonderful job. The lower left-hand corner, we have um, two, T two of our TLCS people, one, one of our TLCS people and an AEA person who are modeling for a brand new teacher. I think when you look at some of the things that we have in our district for retention to help to help speed along the, the knowledge to gain for our teachers, it's modeling. What does it look like and see like it? In it? And so this is a good example of that. Um, the person on the left is Miss Steverson. She uh, is a behavior specialist at the AA, and the person on the right is Mrs. Phil. And uh, they're just both wonderful educators there to help with uh, help move the, our new instructor along in that room. And on the right hand, lower right hand side, we have uh, Mrs. Schutman. She is also a fifth grade teacher at Madison. And I, every time I walk into her classroom, the level of engagement is through the roof. What I wanted to share here is that this is an Amplify lesson. And when I walked into this lesson, the students were getting ready to write poetry. And when I stuck around, the poetry that they wrote was really engaging right on spot with the with the learning target so he's some i just wanted to share some wonderful examples of learning that's going on in our district and we have outstanding educators and people in our district really moving that forward the last thing that i want to mention is i'm very proud to to introduce to our district miss sarah ott so on the consent agenda the Director of Communications and Community Relations uh, comes to us from the city of Davenport. She is a dynamic leader who is going to move our communications and community relations forward in a very positive direction. Um, she, she has some of the initiatives that she has done with the city, the communication, the rebranding that she has done inside of the city has been excellent. So we're very excited for her to join our team. Uh, that concludes my superintendent's report. Thank you for that very informative report. Uh, we'll move on to committee reports. Uh, finance committee. No report? Okay. Uh, Elziak? Um, we meet tomorrow night. Okay. Long range facilities planning? None at this time, right? We have not met since the last meeting. Policy committee. Um, we have a lot of policies that are being finished up. Some are being revised already, so that will be coming up later in the agenda. Thank you. Uh, legislative advocacy, uh, the superintendent and I met with a couple of our local mayors as part of our bi-monthly meetings to meet with them to see what they got going and let them know what we got going. All right, we'll move on to items requiring action. May I have a motion on subject 11.01 .01, change to the long range facilities plan to include new, new facilities instead of expansion and renovation at SMART? Mr. President. Director Hayes. I approve, the, I move the board approve the adjustments to the long range facilities plan to include new facilities instead of expansion and renovation at FL Smart Intermediate School. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Motion's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, this will be a roll call vote. Uh, Director Beck. Or I'm sorry, Director Hayes. Yes. Director Beck. Yes. Director Potts. Yes. Director Barnes. Yes. Director Poshton. Yes. Director Fine Jerome. Yes. My vote is yes. Motion carries. May I have a motion on subject 11.02? Mr. President. Director Hayes. I move the board approve Bray Architects as designers for the William Intermediate Partial Replacement and Roof Restoration for $63,400. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Ayes have it. Motion carries. 
May I have a motion on subject 11.03 mid city shed roof replacement? Mr. President, Director Hayes. I move the board approve the mid city shed roof replacement to the lowest responsible responsive bidder, Sterling Commercial Roofing, in the amount of $77,800. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been moved and second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Ayes have it. Motion carries. May I have a motion on subject 11.04? Mr. President. Director Beck. <clears throat> I move the board approve the purchase of curriculum resources from Project Lead the Way, totaling $71,294 using grant funds. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Huh? Any discussion? Yeah. Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Ayes have it. Motion carries. May I have a motion on subject 11.05? Mr. President. Director Beck. I move the board approve the purchase of a collaborative robotic welder using $40,000 from a high demand governor's STEM council grant and up to $60,000 of PEPL funds. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been moved and second. Is there any discussion on this? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Ayes have it. Motion carries. May I have a motion on subject 11.06? Mr. President. Director Klein Jerome. I move that the board cast our weighted vote for Paul Brooks as director of district number eight and Sharon Simmons as director of district number two for the Mississippi Bend Area Education Agency Board of Directors. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Director Beck. Um, just for uh, people who may not know, can you explain a little bit about what, why we would be voting, like who these people are and what, what we're voting on exactly, what the AEA Board of Directors does? Or maybe the superintendent can tell us. All right. Um, so basically, the AEA is split up into nine districts, and. Davenport schools, I want to say five districts touch our area. I should know this. Um, in each school district, if you have uh, jurisdiction within that district, it'll go before each district to vote on those people. Um, does that answer your question? That's, that's why we vote for so many different districts then? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we have five districts. Okay, and the, these people here are, um, uh, are any of these people already? Paul Brooks is an incumbent. He's okay. been on the board for a while, yeah. Okay. Any other discussion? Brenda, I'm going to abstain on this one because I sit on the AEA board. All right, uh, seeing no other discussion, I will call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Ayes have it. Motion carries. May I have a motion on subject 11.07? Mr. President. Director Postum. Move the board adopt a resolution fixing the date for a public hearing on the proposed use of saved revenue for an athletic facility infrastructure project. A public hearing will be held in the Jim Hester boardroom, second floor Achievement Service Center, 1702 North Main Street, Davenport, Iowa, on December 11, 2023, at 5.30 p.m. On the proposal to use safe revenue for the following athletic facility infrastructure project to install, equip, and furnish turf fields for the existing high school athletic facilities. The current estimated cost of this athletic facility infrastructure project is $12,900,000. The board secretary is authorized and directed to publish notice of this public hearing in a newspaper having general circulation in the district. 
such publication will be made not less than 10, no, nor more than 20 days ahead of the hearing date. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. second. I think you got it. <laughs> uh, motion's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? This will be a roll call vote. Uh, Can I? Sorry. Oh, Director Beck. Um, just to confirm for anyone who might <clears throat> uh, have just kind of tuned in, this is just to fix the date for the hearing. And if people want to talk about it, that's when the public can come and give us their thoughts. Okay. Thank you for the clarification, Director Beck. Any other discussion? <laughs> Student board members, if you have anything, feel free to chime in. I don't mean to call you and put you on the spot. Um, seeing no other discussion, I'll call for the vote. Director Postion? Yes. Director Potts? Yes. Director Barnes? Yes. Director Klein Jerome? Yes. Director Hayes? Yes. Director Beck? Yes. My vote is yes. Motion carries. May I have a motion on subject at 11.08? Mr. President. Director Postion. Move the board adopt a resolution fixing the date for a hearing on the proposed issuance of approximately $160 million school infrastructure sales services and use tax revenue bonds. A public hearing will be held in the Jim Haster Boardroom Second Floor Achievement Service Center 1702 North Main Street, Davenport, Iowa, on December 11th, 2023, at 5.30 p.m. on the proposal to issue approximately $160 million uh, school infrastructure sales services and use tax revenue bonds, which may be issued in one or more series over multiple fiscal years, pursuant to Iowa Code Sections 423F.2, 423F.4, for the purpose of providing funds to construct, build, furnish, and equip new middle school buildings and improve the sites to repair, remodel, improve, furnish, and equip North High School building and improve the site, and to install, equip, and furnish turf fields for the existing high school athletic facilities, including costs of issuance and a debt service reserve fund if required by the purchaser. Any bond proceeds remaining, proceeds remaining after completion of this project will be used for other school infrastructure projects as authorized by the school district's revenue purpose statement. The secretary is authorized and directed to publish notice of this public hearing in a newspaper having general circulation in the school district. Such publication will be made not less than 10 nor more than 20 days ahead of the hearing date. Thank you, is there a second? Second. Motion has been moved and seconded. Uh, is there any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. This will be a roll call vote as well. Director Postion. Yes. Director Beck. Yes. Director Hayes. Yes. Director Klein Jerome. Yes. Director Potts. Yes. Director Barnes. Yes. My vote is yes. Motion carries. May I have a motion on subject 11.09? Mr. President. Director Postion. Move the board approve or our request to the School Budget Review Committee for modified supplemental assistance for the fiscal year 2023 special education deficit in the amount of $4,958,879.50. Thank you. Second. Is there a second? Thank you. <laughs> Motion's been moved and seconded. Is there any other discussion? Director Beck. Um, just to clarify for anybody who might not realize, this is money that we have already spent, that we have to spend. <clears throat> um, we are asking for, we are going before the school budget review committee to ask for the authority to use the money that we already have, correct? That's correct. Yep. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, this will be a roll call vote as well. Uh, Director Postion. Yes. Director Beck. Yes. Director Barnes. Yes. Director Klein Jerome. Yes. Director Hayes. Yes. Director Potts. Yes. My vote is yes. Motion carries. May I have a motion on subject 11.10? Mr. President. Director Klein Jerome. I move that the board. 
uh, approve the following policies. 101.04, 504.09, Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, motion's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. Ayes have it. Motion carries. All right, we'll move on to discussion items. The first subject for discussion is 12.01, board calendar December 2023 through November 2024. Turn it over to Superintendent. Actually, Brenda, you want to walk us through this one? Uh, this is a draft calendar for your um, consideration for next year. There are no major changes in how the um, calendar has been set out. It matches this year's where you did six committee of the holes approximately every other month. Um, and then you had one regular meeting in December and otherwise you had two regular meetings per month. Um, I did note where we went off course um, for spring break, you'll see that you're having two regular meetings the first and last Mondays instead of the second and last Monday. Um, if there's a holiday on a Monday, as traditional, you've moved those meetings to Tuesday. Um, I did have a question, or you guys might want to think about, do you want to hold um, your organizational meeting during Thanksgiving week? Or do we want to move that those dates around in November? November's really busy for you guys anyway, um, with IASB and three holidays. So, you know, that was one. But otherwise, it's very similar to this year's. And then just to clarify, this will come up um, during your organizational meeting on the 27th for approval. Director Beck. Um, <clears throat> well, I was, I was just thinking, so that's the third Monday, right? November 25th. That's, it's the first and third, or no, second and fourth, sorry. That's the fourth Monday. Is there, um, I know we typically don't have um, a third Monday I'm well, never mind. It's fine. I don't get to go anywhere anyway, but <laughs> other people might. <laughs> so it is kind of a heavy week, but it's a Monday. Yeah, can I add something, Dan? The only thing about November that you guys could maybe flex on a little bit, um, I'm looking at the calendar. You don't have a committee of the whole that month. If you wanted to move to November 4th, and November 18th. You know, you could do a first and third and just do your regular meetings then, but it, there is no election next year, so we don't have to wait for a canvas of votes okay. for the organizational meeting. So that helped, that gives you a little bit more flexibility. Could we do like a November 4th and then the November 12th for our organizational meeting? Or would that be too long between from there to December. The next December meeting would probably be a committee of the whole on the second and a, uh, your only December meeting then would be the ninth. 
So it would be a break between the 12th and the 9th, or 12th of November and December 9th. I would support that. The 4th and the 11th? Or yeah. The 4th and the, the 18th? Yeah. The 11th is the holiday Veterans Day, so it would have to be the 12th. The 4th and the 12th. The 9th and the 18th. Is the I can't do third Mondays in the month. I got another Sunday. Why not? Why not the 18th? Hmm? Why not the 18th? I have another standing meeting every third Monday of the month. Oh. I mean, we can hold meetings without Dan. <laughs> it's the organizational meeting, though. Yeah, we kind of need you for that one. Um, I guess I'm okay with it as proposed, but if it's going to be tough for people, it might be easier to do something slightly different. Um, but I'm not going to, I mean, I'll vote for this. Yeah, you'll just need to make a decision before the next meeting. Um, and I can bring a couple drafts if you want me to. Um, and you guys can consider them. Or you can have the discussion here. And I like the 12th and the 25th, the way you've got it written. I mean, it's Thanksgiving week, but we have school Monday and Tuesday at least. So it's not like we're going out of town. Brenda, I'll do this. I'm going to go around the, the loop here and see, as Brenda has it done right now, Director Barnes, do you have any issues with how it is right now? Director Potts? You already stated okay. yours. Director Hayes? You got your consensus. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Brenda. Uh, we will move on to the next uh, discussion subject is 12.02, Hayes Elementary Furniture, Painting, and Graphics. Uh, uh, continuing with our um, theme or what we've been doing with other schools, um, <clears throat> Hayes will be our next school. We start looking at getting new furniture for, painting, and graphics, doing the normal updates um, like we, we've begun at Jefferson and Harrison. So. Um, we would like to um, proceed with our project of getting more furniture for them and, and getting the ball rolling with uh, the updates we planned for that school. Any questions? Director Klein, Jerome. How are we picking schools? We had, uh, we had met with a person that does kind of our asset management for buildings and met with him and just talked about which schools we thought were kind of had the, the oldest or roughest conditioned uh, furniture as well as by region so some of the regions might have a little bit newer furniture some might be a little bit older but we've gone through and try to pick a lot of school per region okay thanks director barnes could could we see that sort of order at some point the yeah. order of schools and yeah. uh, second question i have when will this work be done this one would be done in uh our, i believe on spring break we would get furniture the painting and graphics will have to be done during summer because otherwise we'll be too disruptive to school. Okay, great. Any other questions? All right. Uh, we will move on to subject 12.03, use of Bray Architects for cow wall replacement at Harrison, Walcott, and Wood. So in this instance, there was uh, hail damage at these locations, and um, because of the size of the project, we need to hire an architect for this project. Uh, it would be covered by our insurance, but um, these are these are buildings just sustained some hail damage. We want to do the repairs too. I, I don't know the lead time on the product yet or when that will be done, but I would assume or we'll be trying to do it over the summer because that'd be pretty disruptive to school during the school year also. Uh, these would be something similar to like a skylight on a building. 
So if you go into a building and it's kind of shaded, not clear glass, but kind of got a little shade to it, that's kind of what we're talking about. Any questions? Knock it out of the park again. Uh, subject 12.04, use of Leggett Architects for Central High School Cafe Roofing Improvements. So uh, in this instance, we, we're doing a, a roof replacement at Central High School. Um, this is outside the cafe area and around it. So if you've been in that uh, lunchroom, you've seen water stain marks on the wall and some things around that that have been there for a long time. We've had some continued issues there. So in this project, we're gonna do a roof replacement. We're gonna do a, a removal of a bunch of stuff that's sitting on the roof for, it was supposed to be used, I believe, for like outdoor, maybe an outdoor eating area at one point, um, but nobody uses it right now. And then um, also a replacement of some windows in that project also. So in this instance, it's a little bit more expensive than we would like to see from our architect, but um, it's a little more complicated than just a flat roof replacement and that's it. Any questions about that? Director Ben. Um, so if I remember correctly, right now it's got those like pyramid skylights, right? So yeah. taking those out and replacing it with something that's flatter. Yeah, it's more straight and vertical. and But yeah. with skylights still? Or... Yeah. Okay. That makes more sense. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Any other additional information? Um, the only question I have, does this... I know like a certain amount of money is always set aside like every year for central improvements. Does this come out of that or is this on top of that? Uh, this is this is like a, we have a set aside amount for roof replacements every year. Um, so this would be coming out of one of our budgets for roof replacement. There are some dollars that we set aside that we weren't using the last few years. So we have a little bit of additional funds in that account that we normally wouldn't have had probably, but this allows us to tackle a really big project and get it get it knocked out of the way. I think it's been needed for a number of years, if I recall. That's what we always hear. Um, I think this will be like the third or fourth like roof thing at Central. Is, is, are there any other roofs at that building that we need to do? Because I'd rather just do them and get them done mm -hmm. instead of. I'll check we into did, that. We did the gym. We did something else. It, it, yeah, we did the George Marshall gym here not that long ago. Yeah. Remember the, the raccoons bit the I, rubber on the roof? I just uh, rather when we got a crane there setting stuff up there, we do it all because it would save a ton of money. Sure. I'll look into it and make sure we're not skipping roofs that are close to doing replacement. Okay. That sounds good. Thank you. Yeah, Any no other problem. discussion? No, uh, no construction manager considerations on this one either. Thank you. Not at this time. We're going to move on to subject 12.05, policies for board's first discussion. I will turn it over to Director Klein, Jerome. Um, the only thing I'd like to point out is we have seen 503.01. In fact, we were set to vote on that tonight, and then changes got made by IASB. So if it looks familiar, it is but there have been revisions that came out of um, IESB. A lot of these are going to move into regulations because um, it's not really setting a policy, it's how you're gonna do it. So we felt it was um, fit better into regulations. Any other questions, any questions? So that's specifically 50213, 50220, and 50513. That's now administrative regs. They would all go into regs. Okay. In fact, there's a, a handbook that they follow for like 50213, an administrative handbook. Any other questions, comments? These will come back a couple more times before we vote on them. 
Thank you. Uh, we will move on to administrative reports. Not at this time. Are there any board requests? All right, seeing none, uh, we'll move on to board reflections. We'll start with Director Beck. Um, well, uh, I guess this is sort of a standard board meeting. So um, I love that we have all these posters here to um, show off that we have such distinguished schools for Project Lead the Way. Um, and uh, I would like to, I really appreciated the uh, reports by our student board members. They were very detailed and helpful and good, uh, good information to hear. Um, <clears throat> and then I'd like to extend my congratulations to our newly re-elected board members, I guess is the way to describe that. So, yeah. Thank you, Director Beck. Director Poston. I think uh, the recognition as far as the project uh, lead the way, um, but also uh, moving forward with our uh, revenue bonds uh, for our um, projects, um, the uh, two middle schools and our athletic uh, facilities. Thank you, Director Poshton. Director Hayes. I enjoy the detailed explanations from the student board members, and I also um, appreciate the efficiency of this particular meeting. Everything just kind of went, you know, having the first and second conversations and then going through the discussion. Everything just really kind of clicked like clockwork, and I enjoy that. Thank you, Director Hayes. Director Klein, Jerome. Um, I like the superintendent's report, having the photos of students and teachers um, out in the buildings. I thought that was um, great. Um, we got through a lot of policies, so that's also a plus. Thank you, Director Klein, Jerome. Director Potts. I would like a positive reflection on the fact that on an evening where we have three meetings, we got this one done in good time. Anything for you, Bruce. Thank you, Director Potts. Director Barnes. Uh, two quick things. Love the student board reports. They are awesome. You guys are awesome. And uh, second thing, deeply interested and also impressed with the um, modeling effort and how that actually will relate to teacher retention. Um, I think that's something for us to maybe dive into at some point. So appreciated that as part of the superintendent's report tonight. Thank you, Director Barnes. Superintendent Schneckla. I piggyback on the efficiency of the meeting. Um, I, as an agenda committee member, it's, it's very difficult to, to determine how much time is going to, uh, each one of the items is going to take. And so I think that's really important and respectful. Um, the project lead the way is also incredibly um, cool to see in schools. So it's neat to watch an entire library turn into a STEM lab where they're landing drones and, and, you know, writing code, it, it's it's really neat. Thank you, Superintendent. Um, first, again, like everyone said, the student board members, outstanding reports, and I greatly appreciate that. And they hung around for the majority of the meeting, and Ruben stayed all the <laughs> way till the end. So we appreciate that. Um, and I want to acknowledge Director Poshin for reading all those long-winded things and didn't even want a bottle of water when he was done, so good for him. I got to have a drink right after the open forum speech. So uh, with that, Director Potts, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? Second. I'm assuming no discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Ayes have it. Motion carries. Meeting adjourned.